Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel ML for Analytics. I am Jyoti and in this video we are going to cover the concept of calculation groups and calculation items in DAX and Power BI. So basically calculation groups and calculation items they, uh, they came in July 2020 only and they are comparatively new to the world of Power BI and they can prove to be very useful for us. So in this video we will understand what calculation groups and calculation items are, how they are useful and then we will try to implement them using tabular editor which is a Power BI external tool uh, in the form of different case studies in this particular uh, video only. So let's get started. So let's cover introduction first. So let's understand what they are all about. So calculation groups and calculation items they work together and they help us in uh, decreasing the amount of redundant measures in a model by grouping them in the form of calculation items. So basically what happens is that suppose you have any base measure which is say sales amount and when uh, you have to perform various different calculations on that particular base measure. So suppose you have to actually calculate year to date, you have to calculate month to date and then you also have to perform say you want to calculate sales amount in the same period last year. These are some basic time intelligence calculations and if you want to do all of them you will have to create separate measures in Power BI in order to come up with them. Even if you do not want to perform time intelligence calculation, so you want to calculate average, you want to calculate median and uh, some other thing, you want to calculate count, then then this again is going to require uh, separate measures in the world of Power BI and DAX. So calculation group is a set of calculation items which are grouped together as they are variations of the same subject. So in the example that I gave you that is sales amount and when we have to perform various calculations on sales amount like I want to actually calculate year to date and then month to date so here the the base measure is the same but the calculations are varying so you see the subject is same but the calculation are all variations so uh, when I talk about calculation item so they only uh, are actually variations of the same subject and what calculation group is it is a set or it is a group of all these calculation items so say I have a calculation item which is time intelligence and I have year to date, month to date, same period last year, these three different variations of the same subject that is time intelligence calculation. So in this particular case the group is time intelligence but the calculation items are three in numbers that is uh, year to date, month to date and same period last year. So you see calculation item, it is not a measure, it is a variation of a measure. It is some kind of calculation that I want to apply on a measure. It contains the calculation that has to be applied on an already existing measure. So this already existing measure is a base measure. In my case it is the sales amount. So it contains the placeholder for the existing measure and the calculation to be applied on that placeholder is defined in the calculation item. So in calculation item only you have the calculation or you have the DAX expression that you want to apply on that placeholder and that placeholder can be any measure. Can, it can be any base measure of your choice. It can be sales amount, it can be margin, it can be, uh, you can say, the count of quantities, anything. One can apply many different calculations like year to date, average, etc. on top of an existing DAX measure. So if you are having any DAX measure in front of you, 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 want, you may want to apply different kind of calculations on that. So it can be any time intelligence calculation or it can be any kind of aggregation. So 
in this particular case, uh, in traditional DAGs, you will have to actually create separate measures. But when you start using calculation groups or calculation items, you don't have to do that. You just have to create your base measure and then create uh, calculation groups and calculation items and then you are good to go you don't have to create separate measures so you can use calculation groups to use measures existing measures as filter in power bi report on this uh, we are going to talk in the future so in this particular video the tool uh, that we will be using is a popular external tool for power bi which is tabular editor so it makes it very easy to make new calculation items and calculation groups and you can even edit them, edit them and save them. So you can do all these things. The model is connected to the tabular editor and making and saving them in tabular editor makes it appear in Power BI and vice versa. So uh, enough of the theory, let's get to uh, the application part. So in, uh, for this uh, video, I have created four different base measures. One is the sales amount, uh, which is nothing but it is uh, the summation of the sales amount. So uh, SumX is basically, uh, you can say it works on raw context. So it uh, iterates uh, on fact sales table and it uh, sums up the sales amount in the current filter context. If I go for sales quantity, again, I am summing uh, sales quantity and uh, it is saved in this particular measure, that is sales quantity. If I talk about total cost, it is basically the product of sales quantity and unit cost. All, uh, both of them are coming from fact sales table only. And if I talk about margin, then it is the difference between sales amount and total cost. So suppose I want to go for like YTD or year to date calculation. So if I talk about say only year to date calculation, then I have four base measures. And for each of these measures, I have to create a separate Y2D calculation using calculate function of DAX and dates YTD function of DAX. And uh, if I, the same thing I have to repeat for other base measures also. So on, you can see that only the measure name is changing, but the calculation is the same. That is dates YTD time intelligence formula is applied on all the four base measures. Now this makes the count of measures equal to eight. Now suppose I also want to apply month to date calculation or MTD. So I have to go for four more measures. I have to write four more measures over here. So then the measure count becomes equal to 12. Now I have to apply even quarter to date calculation also. So this again makes my calculation count equal to you can say 16. And if I have same period last year, that is another variation of these four base measures, then it makes count equal to 20. So you can see that in order to perform four time intelligence operations, I actually have to create 20 different measures. So it actually uh, makes the measure count uh, very large, you know, uh, and also uh, making a tally of all of them. And suppose I want to edit something in the long run, it is going to make everything very complicated, very complex. So in, in all this, what can save us? In all this, uh, calculation items and calculation groups can save us. So in order to achieve that, what we can do is, we can go to external tools over here and go to tabular editor. Once we open tabular editor, it is directly connected to the Power BI model that we are operating on over here in, in our calculation groups file, PBIX file. And in this particular case, I have already created calculation groups, uh, two calculation groups. One is time intelligence and the other one is metric. So for the, for, uh, the purpose of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one calculation group and one uh, calculation item for you so that you know how to do that. So 
I have to right click on this tables and then I have to go to create new and in this I can go to calculation group. So this is going to create a new calculation group for me and what I can name it as demo. I have named it as demo. Now I can actually go to say uh, this calculation item over here and, and I can create a new calculation item over here. So suppose uh, I can name it as demo1 and I can give any DAX expression to it. Uh, like I can say demo purpose and then just click on this check button. Now I can go to file and I can click on save over here. So saving it over here makes this pop-up appear uh, in front of me in the PBIX file. So it is saying one or more calculation groups need to be manually refreshed. So I can just click on refresh now over here. And what happens is that that demo calculation group that I had created over there it appears in the form of a table in my PBIX file. So demo is the name of tab table. So the calculation group that I have created it becomes equivalent to the table in PBIX file and as you can see this name it is actually you can say a kind of attribute or if I talk about the PBIX file it has become a column for me so if I go to data view and say I go to this demo only then I can see that it is having two columns one is uh, actually visible and its name is uh, name only. This is called an attribute and in terms of PBIX it is a column and it is having just one value that is new calculation. So this, this new calculation is the calculation item that I have created in tabular editor and this is appearing as one of the row of this particular attribute. In the same way, I have crea already created two calculation groups that is uh, time intelligence and metric. So let's go through that. If I talk about this time intelligence metric, it is having four calculation items PY, QTD, YTD and CV. Uh, actually it should be named as CY. So I, I can go over here and I can name it as CY over here. So once I'm done with that, I can again go to file and I can, go, uh, I can select save and then again it is going to ask this and I'm going to refresh it over here. So if I go to time intel intelligence over here, CY is reflected correctly over here. Now I will actually go through each of them and see what uh, the DAX expression for each of them is. So for CY it is selected measure. So previously I was talking about a placeholder. Every calculation item has a specific placeholder. So again what, what is going, what uh, happens is that if I talk about sales amount, sales amount is going to go in this particular calculation item and it is going to see this DAX expression selected measure over here and it knows about that it, sales amount then actually uh, is calculated whenever CY is referenced so the measure reference uh, that is sales amount for me it it is actually replaced by the DAX calculation which appears in CY so selected measure is a kind of placeholder over here now if I go to say PY that is previous year then I have used this calculate function over here and again I have used the placeholder that is say, uh, selected measure DAX function over here and what happens is that now I can go I can see that uh, the time intelligence function that I have applied over here is same period last year and I am using the dim date date key date, date key is having the dates 
different dates uh, of the model. So same period last year it actually uh, say if I talk about March, March 2021 then same period last day is going to actually shift the window to March 2020. Now this, if I go to QTD, QTD is the name of another calculation item and as you can see uh, the selected measure is a placeholder and dates QTD is the function that has been used over here. Same goes for YTD. So these are different variation of you can say the same subject. Subject is applying some sort of time intelligence expression and different expression or different variations of time intelligence calculations are these four. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the report and I am going to go to first case over here. Now remember I was actually talking about one more thing that was uh, actually I was uh, saying that I can use these calculation items and calculation groups as filters in my report. So normally measures cannot be used as filters. Uh, so but using calculation groups and calculation items enables me to do that. So what I have done over here is that I have actually picked up the name attribute or name column and placed it in the filter visualization. So uh, all the calculation items they appear as rows of the attribute or the name column. So I can use, use it in the form of a filter over here. And in this particular table visualization in the rows I have used the date key of dim date and I have used these four these four expressions or these four measures base measures as values and selecting CY actually tells me uh, the current year calculations so in quarter one what was uh, the sales amount equal to what was the sales quantity equal to now sales quantity is coming in the form of an integer because quantity is always going to be one or two or three it is not going to take any decimal value and if I talk about total cost it is appearing uh, for the current year uh, current year in the uh, current filter context same goes for margin if I select PY then obviously uh, the year has changed in case of current year it was 2007 if I select PY then it is coming 2008 because uh, PY is going to uh, let me know about the previous year calculation so 2000, uh, 2007 is the previous year for 2008 so whatever current year calculation was for 2007 that is 456190995 if I select previous year it is going to appear for 2008 same for 2009 2010 Selecting QTD again is going to give me the quarter to date calculations and selected YTD is going to give me year to date calculations. So this is how I have used uh, different variations of time intelligence calculation item as a filter over here. So guys, with this, I end this video. In the next video, we are going to see, we are going to actually involve one more thing over here that is using both time intelligence and the time intelligence calculation group and I'm going to add one more calculation group and using both of them in order to reduce uh, these four measure count actually. So we are going to actually do something like this. We are going to actually use uh, time intelligence as a filter and also we are going to use this metric as a filter and this table size gets reduced in this particular case. So thanks for watching this video. If you like this video then please like, uh, hit on the like button. If you have got any doubts then uh, let us know in the comment section and subscribe to this channel if you want to know uh, more about all these topics of DAX. So thank you and have a nice day.